trying to have as many goods all. Alrighty, so I uh, will do the Bill Maher video now. Even though Jasmine sent me another YouTube comment and another Gmail. And so, uh, yeah, like I told you in the first video of the day, it's going to be a Mr. Toad's wild ride. All day long. All day. All day long. All day long. However, uh, do people pay attention to the theme song in the descriptions below? Anybody recognize the pattern for today yet? I just did two videos. I plan on keeping the theme going. Can you figure out which one it'll be? So, Bill Maher, New Rules. Uh, well, Friday nights. Not every Friday night. He does take days off. I uh, was about uh, what future historians will say about America. And it will shock us. And uh, he's been promoting his book that's coming out Tuesday. So I'll help him. Sure. His new rules are awesome, and his book is based on the discussions in his new rules. And so, yeah, it, it's kind of amazing. He's got magical powers like Jasmine has. <laughs> Should I put Jasmine's head over Bill Moore's? I already have the thumbnail picture all ready to go until I, uh, I was checking the news and then checked my site and then found out that <laughs> my day is already full and it's already almost two and I've only got two out of the billions of videos to do. So yeah, we still have to talk to you about Mount Olympus. It's gonna blow, Mormons! It's gonna blow! You're all going to die! So we got that video to do for you too, today. And so there's only really a couple that would be real quick stuff that you guys will be confused because I'm not explaining them. Um, what's the point of doing a video if nobody understands and you have to explain your video? So, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has always been under attack since Brigham Young and the Danites for their revisionist history of all things Joseph Smith's church. Because in 1838, Joseph Smith was locked up in Liberty Jail until 1839. And so apparently he made all these changes in 1838. However, when Joseph Smith got out of Liberty Jail and got back in to take over the church again, he didn't implement all of these supposed changes that he was supposedly making. And if you are not studying the history of the church, Ta-da! You have no clue what's gonna what's going on, and the evil of this church in their revisionist history, because this church has to continue to maintain the lies and deceptions and the cons and the frauds, so that they maintain their authority over you. There is no Jesus. They tell you that. Jesus speaks to them. And then they tell you the will and word of Jesus. And they laugh at you for being a sucker and loser. So yeah, because of historians doing research on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints,
over 10 million Mormons have just said, I'm out. That's it. This can't be true. So what does that say about the remaining two to three million Mormons left in this church? What does that say about you guys? And so, yeah, over time, church historians have uncovered things that the church did not want them to uncover. As uh, 1838 was the first attempt to revise all things Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. And so after Joseph Smith's murder, they bring them all back. And to reinforce that what they said was true, in 1844, Brigham Young published his first version of the Doctrine and Covenants and put in section 119 on tithing and claimed it was in 1838, right after the Kirtland Safety Society was sabotaged. See, Danites were taking out loans and not paying them back, got Joseph and some other guys that I found in trouble. And one of those guys that got in trouble exposed that the Danites told him, that Joseph Smith told him, them, that, where is it? There it is. It's a brand new edition. Warren Parrish had uh, spoken out against this neo-Danite takeover coup and said that it was Joseph Smith's intent, thus Brigham Young's, to overthrow religion, all religions in the world, specifically Christians and Islamists, by using the Neo-Mormonism of the 1838 coup. All this stuff. This was why they revised it, rewrote it, framing Joseph for all of it while he was locked away, chasing out leaders of the church like Thomas B. Marsh, who in his affidavit that got the extermination order said that he was told by Danites that Joseph Smith is the leader of the Danites and was ordering the Danites to murder Mormons and that it was his intention to overthrow the governments of the world. We know that this isn't true by numerous ways. And so, yeah, George Albert Smith, liar for the Lord, exposing the truth. And so, as uh, Brigham Young continued to make changes in this valley, blaming it on Joseph, and that's why section 132 was not put in uh, the year 1838, but 1843, because of some other things that happened. And they they didn't seem to coordinate their documents and their claims accurately enough because uh, one of the things that Joseph Smith went back before he made his supposed changes was on polygamy and in 1842 John C. Bennett was excommunicated for polygamy. Joseph Smith was ordering and practicing polygamy, claiming it was by Jesus. Why is he excommunicating John C. Bennett for doing what Joseph Smith had ordered? And so, yes, John C. Bennett used that Danite lie, which eventually ended up the Nauvoo Expositor to get Joseph Smith murdered. So, 
Yeah, the Danites had it all planned and prepared on how to murder Joseph. Because he got away with it. He got out of jail. That was his death threat. And the Church of Jesus Christ, still to this day, follow the exact same practices, criminal operations, as those Danites. And so, the United States of America were big, bad, and mean, and shut down the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if that's a shock to you, it's because the Church is in denial that the United States shut them down. And so go over official declaration number one, verse 11. Hilarious! <laughs> and so, yeah, the membership of the church continued as normal, unaware that the United States shut them down. They knew that the United States was big, bad, and mean, sending in the army and uh, forcing the church to rent back what was seized. And so the church got deep into debt because of that. And so then you get the myth of Lorenzo Snow and his revelation to restore tithing of section 119. See, the actual tithing of Joseph Smith was always from Malachi. And Malachi is talking about investing in the poor. That the tithing back in those days was food and animals and clothing. You know, stuff that you make. Stuff that you can make from. Because if you take an apple, for example, and you have a tree that produces a thousand apples, you have to give 10% in tithing, and so that's 100 apples. You give it to the bishop's storehouse, and then the bishop's storehouse is for the poor, not for investing in the stock market. And uh, the poor get these apples, and they eat them, and then there's seeds in the apples. And then they can then take those seeds and plant those seeds and produce apple trees producing a thousand apples. And now they can pay tithing for others who are poor to invest in them so that they can produce apple trees. And then they, from the 900 left, they take what they need for their survival and they take the rest and they go to the market and they sell their apples to others. They're no longer poor. And they increase and prosper year after year. That was the intended economy of Malachi. And thus you have everybody farming and you have vegetation and photosynthesis tells us that that's how we get rain and oxygen mingled with nitrogen. Otherwise we die. And yeah, the earth is beautified and everybody's prosperous and Zion is established all is well in Zion. But nope. Nobody wants to be good to other people especially the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so, they continued to perpetuate their lie, and uh, there was a group of Mormons uh, in the early 1900s who were being disaffected, not happy with the, the church leadership. Joseph Fielding Smith did his first presidency statement on the One Mighty and Strong, it was like a book. And uh, in essence, you know, the Cliff Note version is he does not know. <laughs> a whole book which could have been summed up in 
He does not know. <laughs> because he would be verse 8. <laughs> and everybody else knew it. <laughs> and thus he gave his first presidency statement to lie and deceive Mormons <laughs> to say, because he doesn't know, he therefore can't be verse 8. <laughs> and so, still to this day, regular, everyday, common Mormons think they are verse 8 if they apostatize, <laughs> go against the church. <laughs> and they'll do the lightning bolt whenever they see somebody else <laughs> drinking a Mountain Dew. <laughs> hilarious and everybody is wrong because section 85 verses 7 and 8 comes from the law of the Jews Deuteronomy 18 15 to 21 ish something like that 22 23 maybe because 15 through 19 is verse 7 that's the one mighty and strong and then at verse 20 that's verse 8, the false prophet. <laughs> and it's all about the latter days. It's all about a Mormon. And so that's why it was not footnoted in Deuteronomy to section 85, because the church doesn't want you to know. <laughs> but I'm jumping ahead to when they came out with the 1981 version of the Quad. And then Spencer W. Kimball... Uh, threw it all away and redid the badge in 1982 to have the Book of Mormon be covered up with another testament of Jesus because people were still able to read First uh, Nephi chapter 1 verse 2 Jewish? What? But Jesus is in the center of our name Yeah that's your big clue, the church is a fraud. It doesn't mean that it's Christian. Dear God. And so, Heber J. Granite is the next hinge point of Mormonism. As uh, already in 1920, there was a group that would be the first group of apostates to leave the church. Uh, there was others disaffected and left, but they didn't form themselves into a a fundamentalist group of branch off of Brigham Young and this is what became the FLDS church and uh, and, and so uh, Heber J. Grant uh, had to change the name of the church because Brigham Young incorporated it as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the United States does not allow that church to be resurrected from the grave because of all of its crimes. And so he changed the name of the church to the Corporation of the President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But yeah, they still call it the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because they don't want you to know. And uh, uh, as a result, I, Heber J. Grant came out with another edition of the Doctrine and Covenants and took out uh, the, the uh, Lectures on Faith, I believe, in that one, in that edition. And then there were some other uh, changes and additions that were put in, one of which was, I think, uh, the dream of, uh, of uh, Joseph Fielding Smith Sr., which is section 138. And so thus to help keep Mormons stupid with the lies. Because when you don't know the truth, your dreams only represent what you know in symbolic form. And so I've had dreams seeing Jesus Christ, even though now I know we're Jewish. We're supposed to be looking for the Jewish Christ. 
not the Christian Christ, even though we call him non-Trinitarian. And uh, and so, uh, yeah, and it's, the Jesus character in my dreams was used symbolically to teach me line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, until I came to a fuller understanding. But you gotta be just like Bill Maher and Jasmine, <laughs> and keep learning line upon line, precept upon precept, until you know it all. And, uh, and so, I, in 1900, a uh, Bishop Spalding here in Utah of the Baptist Church uh, uh, dared to molest and make afraid the church. As he did a book called Joseph Smith as Translator, in which he trashes Joseph Smith as failing to correctly translate from the King Follett sermon, and uh, more specifically, the Book of Abraham. And uh, tried to claim that Egyptologists say that Joseph Smith is wrong, and all hell was breaking loose, and Mormons didn't know Hebrew or Egyptian, and so Mormons are stupid and can't defend the church, and they look to the prophets, because they're supposed to be able to have all the answers and protect the church and convince them that everything is fine, the bishop is an anti-Mormon, anti-Christ Korahor. <laughs> that the prophets just need to confound him and prove that he was in influenced by the devil who told him to deceive Mormons with that publication. You know, the stories from the Book of Mormon. But nope, they couldn't do it. And prophets failed the Mormons, and so thus the panic. And so along came a, 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 a nom de plume, R.C. Webb. I don't remember what his original name was. He then came out with a publication, as it was his method to find lost causes and come to their defense. And so, yes, he did a, an amusing job of attempting to defend the church, uh, as he is not any kind of authority in ancient translation whatsoever. He was just doing it to get paid by the church to become popular, <laughs> and it worked. Heber J. Grant is the publisher of his book. <laughs> But it was after Heber J. Grant had reincorporated the church with the new name and didn't bother to tell Mormons. And because uh, and also Mormons are now chattel. They have no say in the church anymore. And, uh, and so now they're just to produce money for the church as it's now a business. And so membership simply means your Costco membership. That's about as far as you have authority in this church. You have to be promoted up into the corporate board in order to get a say in the direction of the church. And so thus, the church punishes anybody who dares to molest or make them afraid. Oh yeah? You don't like that our bishops get gr sexually graphic with little kids? Fine, 11 year olds will now be used for polygamy in the millennium. <laughs> you women think you want to wear slacks to church? Fine. <laughs> you 
know obey Jesus who speaks through us and we order you to obey the family proclamation which tells you to still obey your husband. <laughs> and you're still prostitutes for your husband who has to pay the tithing prostitution price for you. <laughs> You're an equal partner. <laughs> you no longer have to wear the veil. <laughs> Eve has a bigger speaking role, <laughs> which just came from the selections from the Book of Moses. did not raise me in Utah and because of that I witnessed the heathen peers being contrary to Mormon doctrine that I was reading from the Book of Mormon from Joseph Smith even from the Bible and so as a result I learned all about bullies, white supremacists, haters, terrorism, seditious conspiracy, all kinds of hate and abuse from my peers. But apparently growing up Mormon among other Mormons, you don't see it. You live in denial as you yourself become one of them in order to be accepted as Mormon. And those of you who do not commit the hate and the crimes of everybody else, you're the black sheep of the Mormon church. You're the goats. You're the tares. You're the anti-Mormon, anti-Christ, Korahor, apostates. You're in the wrong. So yes, ever since I moved here, that's who I ended up becoming. Even though I was an example of Joseph Smith's Mormonism to my born-again Christian peers. And so when they came to me and said, you worship Lucifer, I'm like, what are you talking about? We have exclusive doctrine on Lucifer's doctrine and and we don't practice that. Oops. I'm so naive. See, other people around the world, when they study Mormonism, they can figure it out. And that's the whole point. Is that Bill Maher was talking about people who are not a part of the culture. They're on the outside looking in. And because Mormons are born and raised in the covenant in the church, they don't see it. They don't see how other people are laughing at them. They don't understand. And so they get angry. They get offended. They go to the immediate rush of hasty conclusion defense of the church. And it's typically an ad hominem attack. Oh yeah, well you're stupid. You're ugly. You're bald. Your room is a mess. Yep, Mormons do it to me when I'm trying to save Mormons' lives because they don't see it. They don't see their wickedness. They don't see their crimes. They don't see the King Noah syndrome. They don't see what this church has turned Utah into. And so it's church history that has always been threatening the church's authority. 
And so, as time goes on, the New York Times learns about the New York Museum of Art that finds the Book of Abraham uh, and Book of Joseph Papyri, or what's left of it. And uh, they say, oh, isn't this something that the that church out in Utah has? And so they contacted them and there were deals made for the, the uh, giving it to this church. It doesn't belong to them. They don't even claim to be translators. They want nothing to do with it. They were already humiliated by a Baptist bishop. Why would they want to further humiliate themselves with the actual source documents from the Egyptians. <laughs> Can't we just have Mormon apologists talk about missing plates and if we had them that it would prove we were true? It was all literal history in the learning of the Christians, non-Trinitarian. <laughs> yeah, so that New York Times thing was a big scandal for the church. Again, getting slammed on church history. They had specifically done away with translator. Brigham Young didn't even want anything to do with the Book of Abraham. Their whole Adam on Diamond scam was a mockery of it. <laughs> it wasn't support of it. <laughs> they forged the documents. Oh, man. And so, yeah, this is humiliating for this church. They're getting exposed way too soon. Church has got to be destroyed in 2024. Got to wait. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> and so then more time goes on. See, back then there wasn't Google search and the internet, and so it only stuck to those who bought the New York Times. <laughs> and so the church has always developed this habit of... Uh, Ignoring it and hoping it goes away with time and that people forget and, and then don't remember anymore and, and Yeah, but now with the internet the church has to be more direct and threaten people to catch and kill stories And so yes, there's been a lot of stuff lately that I've been covering over these years that have been caught and killed by this church. Brad Wilcox, for example. Remember that scandal? Remember how it's not being brought up anymore? <laughs> Remember how whenever Brad Wilcox gets put in the church news, I cover the scandal <laughs> to keep it going? Yeah, his latest scandal, if you saw my church news on it, it's got him with his hand on a little girl. <sighs> and so, yeah, the church wanted that whole thing shut up and silenced. Because they had a work for him to do. <laughs> and so, yeah, the other one that the church now is in hiding, hoping it goes away, and everybody forgets. <laughs> was last Saturday, they had their annual anti-porn convention, how much they hate women, that women are the threat to America, and the world, and to mankind. And so, yeah, then the news came out about how a missionary who has to say that he's not involved in porn, he's obeying the law of chastity. Yeah, because of obeying the law of chastity, he raped a woman as a missionary. 
So that was kind of humiliating, trying to promote porn as the enemy, and it's actually the church that's the enemy because they're anti-porn. They don't want to teach sex ed. They want to deny science because science, if it's done right, would tell the truth about church history. And so the 1838 list, yeah, that's because I know how to do it. You assemble all the evidence, you look for patterns, and where you find anomalies, you run a theory test. You got to use Socratic logic methodology, met, logical Socratic methodology, you know, Socrates, moron. Aristotle, Plato, morons. <laughs> Is this a kissing book, Grandpa? <laughs> and, and thus, no ad hominem attacks. That is not logical. You automatically lose your argument with a fallacy of any kind. But the church has to be true, and so Mormons perpetuate fallacies. They are incapable of being logical, telling the truth. They can't, because if they did, they'd have to confess the church is false. And thus, they promote the lies and then force it on others. Everybody must accept and validate their lies. And they'll even throw out the religion card if they have to, to protect the church at all costs. The law of sacrifice. And, and so then you run tests. You can't just say you've got a theory and and promote it, get it officially published in Wikipedia, but have never tested it. You know, kind of like missing plates. The missing plates theory. It'll be proven true once we find the plates. <laughs> mm -mm. That's not logical. It is a, a fallacious argument, and therefore it is wrong. You gotta dismiss it find something else. But Mormons won't do it because they have to maintain the church's authority. And so, yeah, then you get Mark Hoffman, who's well aware that the church is withholding documents from us. That the church is withholding documents of a damaging nature. However, in his forgeries, specifically the Salamander letter, he tried to trick the prophets into believing it was true by threatening their authority, saying that Joseph Smith was talking to a talking salamander. that told him that his son, Joseph Smith III, is to be the president of the church. And as he did found the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that became the Community of Christ, uh-oh, because <laughs> it's still around. And so, yeah, Mark Hoffman knew what he was doing, even though everybody else claims that they have no clue what he was doing. It's obvious what he was doing. He was exposing the church for their lies. However, people began to find out what he was up to. And so he didn't read Trump's The Art of the Deal to know that that was when it was time to cut and run. <laughs> And so he thought, hey, in Alma it says you enforce your false beliefs with violence. That's a great idea. Book of Mormon is so true. And built bombs and tried to murder people. And it blew up on him. And now he is in prison for the rest of his life. 
Unless he's dead. Is he still alive or is he dead? There's another guy who I think might be a Mormon, but nobody seems to know his history. No man knows his history, just like Joseph. <laughs> because everybody lies about him. And so, yeah. And then Gerald and Sandra Tanner sprang up as they were involved in this collection of original documents. But their Mormonism Shadow or Reality publication showed the documents with their Christian annotation. And so, yeah, no duh, it's not Christian. It's Jewish. Let's talk about it being Jewish. Oh, we can't? Because it has to be Christian so that you can claim that it's not Christian? But yeah, the Tanners were a thorn in the side of the church. Because they were coming out with all kinds of publications exposing this church. And Mark Hoffman was a big help for them. <laughs> and so, yeah, they had their Utah Lighthouse Ministry were at their home there across from the ballpark. Yeah, church got them in the end. And, uh, and uh, uh, became very popular among the underground Mormonism. And then you'd eventually get Mormon leaks that would be publishing from this underground Mormonism that was helping feed the abominations of this church. And the church tried to sue the Tanners to stop them from publishing tried to sue Wiki Mormon leaks for their publishing and uh, lots of chaos and, and scandal that was giving the church too much press about how they're trying to cover up their revisionist history of the church. And so, yeah, and before Mark Hoffman, you have uh, the uh, 1981 edition of the quad with the footnotes bible dictionary topical guide specifically designed to direct mormons away from the truth and what the church wanted you to think and interpret the scriptures as non-trinitarian christian and so deuteronomy 18 does not footnote to section 85 nor does it footnote to section 107 verse 91 nor does it footnote the second nephi chapter 3 nor does it footnote the doctrine and covenants section 103 verse 16 etc 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 and so yeah they they cover it up with tg jesus christ and then brag about how many jesus christ topical guide topics they have <laughs> as a distraction to get Mormons to continue to drink the Kool-Aid and drink more of it. Mormons are getting diarrhea of the Mormon Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and you get the, uh, the internet and boom, social media, 2011 church's toast massive exodus of Mormons who are learning that the church has been covering up their history and the church keeps coming out with new publications revising the history trying to deceive the Mormons just like with the kids just like with the women just like with blacks just like with LGBTQIAPO plus just like the poor just like the Jews etc 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 they're white supremacist Christian nationalists they are haters and and so then you continue on as uh, the church continues to cover up the membership numbers now <laughs> because they didn't sign to have their names released. They just said, 
screw this church, I'm out. And, <clears throat> and so, uh, 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 2013, after that damaging blow of an exodus, the church then revised their history again with the Gospel Topics essays confessing that they've lied to us and that this is now the real truth. John Gee would be the one in charge of a translation and historicity of the Book of Abraham and this was because of me. <laughs> Way back in 1999. 1999. And uh, yeah, I had deciphered Paleo-Hebrew back in 1997 of February and then had to redo all my work after the wife said her kids, her kids would not learn Hebrew. So, yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, I had gone to farms and exposed them in a lecture of John Tvednes. It was an overflow lecture, too. <laughs> I don't know if they had a recording of it. They most likely did, but uh, because of the scandal, there's no way they're ever going to release it. <laughs> I just asked a simple question. Innocent. Even one of the audience guys came up to the aisle and tried to explain it to me. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> I just gave him a stern look and said, I already know the answer. <laughs> and that shocked him and he walked away with his date. <laughs> Needless to say, the woman that was with me, even though she said that was a good question, she came to the next lecture with John Gee with a date. <laughs> Yep, they got to her because she said she was taking a class of John Gee's. <sighs> the good old days, memories on the corner of my mind, and uh, and so yeah, the church because of all this pressure, they're just getting slammed with the internet now. You got people doing social media videos, bringing out documents that are on the internet, in PDF form. And so the church, with the payment and the laundering of Gail Miller, began a project called the Joseph Smith Papers, in which they thought, hey, let's give the appearance that we've got nothing to hide Here's the original documents. They claim that they've been going around trying to find them. They just got them from the Gerald and Sandra Tanner. <laughs> I talked to Sandra after the Joseph Smith Papers was put out when that interview video that I did. And, uh, and I, I uh, told her about that, how I thought that was weird of the church after all the trouble that the church put Gerald and Sandra Tanner through to now just release everything that Gerald and Sandra Tanner had already released. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag. I guess we might as well own it. We'll just not tell Mormons. Make Mormons think that everything's fine, that there is nothing to worry about the church is still true. All the documents are just as the way we said they've been. And so thus, 
by not making any of the changes, by not telling you the changes in conference talks, continuing to spread the same old lies, they are deceiving Mormons still. To, as Mormons, if there's nothing there, because we already have it, and we're already being taught in seminary and church and BYU, etc., then, you know, there, there's no reason to study the Joseph Smith papers. That's a lot of work. <laughs> there's a lot of documents. Mm hmm. Yeah. I've been doing this for years, guys. There's a big difference in the video content once I found the Joseph Smith Papers. And so, yeah, the 1838 thing there, yeah, that's because of the Joseph Smith Papers. And Mormons continue their denialism. They refuse to look up the Joseph Smith Papers. And so it doesn't matter if I show them the Joseph Smith Papers. Nope, church is true. Joseph Smith is telling you who the evil disposed and designing militant persons are who are attacking his church in 1838. In his 1838 history that didn't get published because it was thrown in Liberty Jail until 1842 and even then Brigham Young wanted nothing to do with it it was that Richards guy who became the mission president in England who preserved it because otherwise it wouldn't have been published under John Taylor because <laughs> Brigham Young didn't want it <clears throat> even though he came out with section 116 in uh, the, his last Doctrine and Covenants, the year before he died. Because you gotta go to Wikipedia, or go to the Joseph Smith Papers and do the long research, or you can just go to Wikipedia to see which sections were included in which edition of the Doctrine and Covenants, by which branch off. And then you can go to the Joseph Smith Papers to verify the Brigham Young editions. And sure enough, that's what Jasmine's been doing. And so Jasmine and James have refused to get baptized because the missionaries are lying to them. And they're being mean to them. You're not going to convert anybody when you're being mean to people. When you're threatening them. When you're telling them that they need to deny truth. That they can't read the Book of Mormon and study it. That's stupid. You're supposed to pray and get the right feeling. Like they did. The church has turned them into weapons. To bad people. Doing the knee whore thing. And so, yeah, this is a very dangerous thing. Because if Mormons would actually study and do their research, like I've been doing, you'd come to the same conclusions. This church can't be true. You're supposed to be Jewish. Our Christ's name is Emmanuel. You're supposed to be looking for him. He's supposed to have been here on the 23rd of September 2017 here in Utah, not in Jerusalem. The mountain is supposed to be divided in Utah, Mount Ol Olivet is actually Mount Olympus. Well, everything changes when you use the truth. And so, yeah, that's sad. I told you about my brother, which the church then threatened him to attack me on my birthday last year. As, uh, my brother, because of his uh, physical eye condition, he can only see 2D, uh, did not get into sports athletics like I did. And so he uh, became a memorizer of the dictionary and the encyclopedia and went on to become valedictorian and uh, 
of high school and then valedictorian at BYU where he would go on to get a, a BS and a master's in sociology. It's supposed to be science based, not psychological based. You're supposed to gather the evidence, like I told you here, assemble them together, look for patterns, identify anomalies, develop a theory to explain the anomalies, and run the tests. And so he became valedictorian at BYU. And then he went to the University of Michigan, where we once lived. And at the University of Michigan, he's working on his PhD. He decides to do his thesis paper on the city of Ephraim. He's Mormon. And so he already has a preconditioned situation for how to do his thesis on Ephraim. He thinks it's going to be an easy A. He's got it all memorized in advance before even going there. So he's just going to go vacation there for a couple years, then come back and get his PhD and go on to be a great sociologist. And everybody will call him Dr. Well, the University of Michigan is not Mormon. It is not owned and operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, like BYU is. And they said, you violated all of the scientific processes and procedures for developing a theory. Your thesis is crap. Because he needed to discuss the real church history to explain the city of Ephraim. And he didn't do it. He was being faith promoting. Lying. And so he cried to my mommy. <laughs> and she told him Pull the religion card on him. They're violating his religious freedom. Wanting him to use science and logical Socratic methodology. They caved and gave it to him. Here, get out. Take it and go. My brother has been working only for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> That's the best job he can get. Because he wouldn't do his job right. His career is a fraud. He did not do church history to understand the sociology of Ephraim. And as you just saw, this is just a video of me talking with you, and already I'm smarter than my brother. In his own field, where he got a PhD. Mm -hmm. I learned how to learn. And so, yeah, learning how to learn, I was told as a kid, I shouldn't need to fear. Church is true, Joseph Smith is true, Book of Mormon is true. Okay, let's find out. What do you mean by true? And so that's what I did. Using the scientific, logical processes, I learned that they are true as Jewish. So even Expo never knows are wrong because they're not using Judaism. Okay. So... There you have it. Third video done. And so, yeah, people looking back on the church without the church threatening them would see the contradictions, see the, the um, lies, recognize the Wikipedia has been overrun by the church rather than independent sources prevent 
presenting the original documents as references. Church won't do that. They purposely quote authors. Even the ex fo never mo authors. Because it takes you away from the original documents that are in the Joseph Smith papers. So the Mormons, when they see that, oh, he's an apostate. Got it. Okay, I don't need to trust what he says. But if you've got the Joseph Smith papers there, then Mormons get shocked. Oh, crap. This is what the original document says? Oh, crap. Oh, no, I'm having a faith crisis. What do I do? Who do I turn to? I told Travis that he's a bleep bleep. And so I've been banned from his channel. <laughs> Apparently he was right. <laughs> and I burned that bridge. <laughs> and now YouTube AI won't let me view his channel unless I'm signed in and I can't because he banned me. <laughs> uh -huh. Judgment Day, Mormons. Judgment Day. Now you know how it'll be. So. <sighs> Alrighty. You're next, Jasmine.